Hey, we're going to dive into 7 ways you can amp up your assertiveness game, so you don't have to keep feeling like you're getting walked all over. So on this channel, we're all about giving you practical tips for the everyday guy. Figuring out how to be more assertive can seriously level up your life. I mean we've all been in situations where we know we should speak up but end up holding back or times when it feels like people are taking advantage of us and we just roll with it. In today's world, it seems like there's this misconception that being assertive is synonymous with aggression or even toxic masculinity. It's like guys are being fed this narrative to sit down, be quiet, and conform or face consequences. Being assertive boils down to fully owning your life, understanding that no one's riding in to rescue you and most importantly, steering clear of that nice guy syndrome and ditching the habit of putting women on a pedestal. Instead of letting folks use you as a doormat, overstep your boundaries, and disregard what you envision for your own life. You speak your mind, embrace your desires, and stand up for your beliefs and wants. Cause truth be told if you don't nobody else will. Usually it's like a coworker slacking off dumping extra work on us. Or it could be a friend, girl or neighbor not respecting our boundaries. And let's not forget those times when a company messes up our order or gives us terrible service, leaving us feeling like we're being pushed around or even those moments in a relationship when we feel ignored or unappreciated. Later on, we beat ourselves up, thinking man if only I had spoken up. So a bunch of times, when we just keep it all inside, not expressing our needs and boundaries, that frustration just builds up until we blow up. And then it gets even messy eh, because we end up pushing people away. There's this feeling like if you stay silent, you're in trouble, but if you do speak up, you're still in a bind. So how do we dodge this whole mess? The key is getting the hang of communicating assertively. Once you nail being more assertive and standing up for yourself, folks start respecting you more. What's even better? You start respecting yourself. No more beating yourself up for staying silent. Plus you keep a healthier mindset since you're not lugging around all that resentment all the time. Now let's dive into 7 ways to amp up your assertiveness game. Number 1. Get in touch with your own needs. One of the biggest hurdles to expressing what you need is not even knowing what those needs are. Many folks find themselves stuck in this frustrating loop where they're clueless about their needs and boundaries. Then when things don't go their way they get all worked up, claiming people are treating them poorly. Meanwhile the others around them are scratching their heads wondering why there's such a fuss. But let's be real, it's not fair to expect others to read your mind. Take a good look at yourself and ask, what sets me off? What gets my blood boiling? What are my must-haves for physical comfort? Any strong preferences, positive or negative? Where do I draw the line? What makes me feel uncomfortable, disrespected? And remember it's not always about big dramatic stuff. Sometimes it's those tiny annoyances lingering just beneath the surface for ages. Speaking from my own experience, having been a waiter in college and later working in client services and advertising, bad service really ticks me off. It used to bug me big time. But now that I recognize it as a trigger, I handle it in a much healthier way. Instead of letting a lousy customer service experience ruin my day, I catch myself thinking, alright this person is probably just overwhelmed not intentionally rude. Or I calmly offer constructive feedback to them or their supervisor. It's about dealing with it better, you know? Here's another nugget I figured out well into my adulting journey. During the holidays, I'm way happier if I can cap the family time at about 3-4 to four days max don't get me wrong. Family time is awesome but being able to bounce back quickly and snag some me time, along with quality moments with my girl is crucial for my sanity. Once you've nailed down your needs, the next step is making sure you can effectively lay them out to other folks. Next up at number 2. Confidence is key when your request is reasonable. One major thing holding people back from assertive communication is doubting if their needs even matter. Assuming your task makes sense, own it, and communicate with confidence. No need to feel guilty about expressing what you need, as long as it's not something outlandish or a major inconvenience to others. Picture this, your colleague decides to ditch work on Friday for a spontaneous ski trip. He shoots you a hastily written email, asking if you can handle two crucial tasks for him that day. Now he's covered for you before, so saying no doesn't feel right. But at the same time, you think he's overstepped by dropping this on you last minute. You could respond with, Hey Bill, happy to help you out this time, but in the future, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a heads up 48 hours in advance. That way I can manage the extra workload. Since your request is on point, Bill can't help but agree. Instead of quietly playing the martyr, you feel empowered for standing up for yourself. More importantly, you've set some guidelines for how you're willing to assist in the future. Now on to number three, try to see things from the other person's perspective. 
While being assertive is about nailing down your needs, you'll rock at getting your point across if you can also take a moment to think about what the other person might need. Acknowledging their needs and interests can give you some serious leverage in getting what you want. Classic move, right? It's like looking for those win-win situations. When you understand where they're coming from, it might help you figure out what you can offer in return or simply show that your request is reasonable in the grand scheme. To pull this off, you gotta tap into some genuine empathy for the other person. Don't automatically assume they're out to mess with you. They're just chasing their own self-interest, much like you are. Going back to that coworker example from earlier, understanding Bill's motives could sound like, Hey Bill, I get it. You wanna hit the slopes whenever the powder's good, and I'm cool with having your back. You've bailed me out too. But here's the deal, we gotta give each other more heads up on stuff like this. Otherwise things are gonna start slipping through the cracks. If you and I end up jobless, neither of us can afford a ski weekend, right? Now moving on to number 4, show some flexibility by tossing out options. When folks lay down the law about their needs or boundaries, it can sometimes make them seem too rigid or unreasonable and that can totally backfire. The trick as per the wisdom of life is to present options. Instead of insisting on this is the only way, you come off as more reasonable when you suggest a couple of different solutions to tackle the problem. Now the real skill here is to ensure that these solutions align with your needs and boundaries. Back in my advertising days, I'd whip out this technique all the time when dealing with clients. Picture this. A VP of marketing asks, Hey, think we can do this two-page spread for $50,000 instead of $80,000? Instead of just shutting them down, I'd say something like, I don't think a two-pager is doable within that budget, but if cost is a concern, we could explore switching to a single page and trimming the budget a bit. Or we could look at maybe limiting the number of revisions your team gets. It won't hit $50,000, but it'll save a few bucks. Without explicitly stating our project rates were non-negotiable, I was assertive in holding our ground. I couldn't offer a discount just because they wanted to pay less, but by suggesting alternative solutions, I maintained our company boundaries while keeping the client relationship intact. Now let's chat about number 5. Keep your delivery cool. It might seem like a no-brainer tip, but staying calm is key to nailing assertive communication. Even if your request is legit and totally reasonable, doing it in an emotional or heated way is going to blow up in your face. When you're yelling your head off, veins pulsating on your forehead, you stop looking reasonable. You come off as aggressive and the other person is going to either shut down or get aggressive right back. And guess what? When that happens, they're way less likely to work with you or find a middle ground. It's just human nature. So focus on keeping that friendly tone, slow down your speech and stick to that calm vibe. Now let's tackle number six, become the scapegoat. When you're assertively communicating, there are times you've got to address other people's actions. The tricky part is folks are touchy and don't enjoy being called out. So in those situations, it's smart to soften the blow with the right language. First off, steer clear of those sweeping statements like, you always blah blah blah, or you never pull your own weight. Secondly, try centering your observations and arguments around yourself rather than putting the spotlight on them. It's way less accusing if you phrase things like, I feel or in my experience or my view is. At the end of the day, being assertive is all about you anyway. Being assertive means making your own decisions about what you'll do or won't do and accepting the consequences and responsibility for your behavior. And this can work in your favor when you're asked to explain your needs or boundaries. One trick here is to use the phrase, I have a policy. This can be a lifesaver when you're feeling pressured to decide on the spot. For instance, you could say sorry, but I have a policy against buying stuff from door-to-door -door salesmen. Or throw in a playful one like, I'd love to help you out, but I have a policy against same-day business travel without an overnight hotel stay. Gotta get my beauty rest. It might sound a bit humorous, but framing your fundamental needs and policies like they're handed down by some higher authority makes people less likely to question them. You respect your boundaries, and when you do, others tend to respect them too. Now on to number 7, the broken record technique. This one can be super handy, especially when you're dealing with a company or customer service and not getting what you want. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like, calmly repeating your request over and over. Calmly being the key word here. Imagine you pick up your clothes from the dry cleaner and one of your shirts mysteriously ends up torn. Initially, the staff gets all defensive claiming the fabric was old and they don't need to compensate you. Instead of losing your cool and dropping expletives, you stick to your guns with a specific request. You might say something like, I'd appreciate it if you could give me a discount on the cleaning or I really think you should deduct $15 from the bill. You keep hammering variations of that specific request, throwing in new info each time to strengthen your argument. 
Like, again, I've been a loyal customer for years, so a discount as a goodwill gesture would mean a lot. Important note, your request needs to be specific to an actual request, not just a vague comment. The broken record technique won't do much if you're just repeating phrases like, you guys messed up my shirt, or you really screwed me over here. Without a clear ask, it's not as effective. On a side note, I've actually used this technique in the past to ask for and get substantial raises back when I worked in advertising. If you stick to that calm persistence and keep repeating that specific task, this approach can be seriously successful. And there you have it folks, 7 ways to step up your assertiveness game. Share your thoughts on this video in the comments below. I love hearing from you if you enjoyed this content. Do me a solid and smash that like button. Plus you can keep the good vibes coming by subscribing to the channel. Thanks for tuning in.